Hola, mysterious observers. I am Human Subject 957, and this is day 10 at the Fake Museum. For those of you who haven't been paying attention, the premise here is that I am trapped in a fake museum and that the key to my escape lies in some made up exhibit. This was partially my fault for entering a cryptic sweepstakes, and it occurred to me that my predicament is not dissimilar from that of an insect caught in a carnivorous plant. Actually, the similarities are scant at best, but that's all I can come up with to segue into today's exhibit Carnivorous Plants. Now, carnivorous animals eat other animals, so it's reasonable to assume that carnivorous plants eat other plants, but that's not true. That would be a herbivorous plant, which is a phrase that nobody has ever used, ever. One outdated phrase that was used was coined by Charles Darwin, and that was insectivorous plant. But that got dropped when it was discovered that carnivorous plants aren't that picky. They've been known to digest frogs and even rats or birds, and one specimen from outer space was known to eat entire human beings alive. Carnivorous plants are usually found in swampy areas where the greedy water steals all the nutrients away from local flora. So a select group of plants decided to evolve in such a way that they might have an alternative source of nutrients. There are five different types of carnivorous plants. Snap traps, pitfall traps, flypaper traps, bladder traps, and lobster pot traps. Don't worry, I'm not just going to leave you with that information. I'll describe them too. Probably the most famous of the carnivorous plant types is the snap trap, specifically the Venus flytrap, which, as we all know, was popularized by the garbage pail kid, Juicy Jessica. Venus flytrap has a big open mouth with a couple of hairs in it, kind of like this lady I used to work for. And when a fly lands in its mouth and touches the hairs, the jaws clamp shut. After about 10 days, the fly has been digested and reduced to chitin, which must not be confused with chitlin. The less famous snap trap is known as the water wheel. It's got the same hairy mouth as the Venus flytrap and my old boss, the difference being it has no roots and floats around on water and feeds on aquatic life. Small aquatic life. Second famous to the snap trap is probably the pitfall trap, commonly known as the pitcher plant. The pitcher plant resembles, um, what's the word? A carafe, filled with sticky digestive juices and lined with slippery inner walls, causing its prey to stumble right into its own demise. In order to keep from filling up with water, one pitcher plant has a lid of sorts, made of a rolled leaf that diverts rain and other moisture to the outside. Uh, another kind of pitcher plant evolved to form a kitchen sink-like hole to let excess fluid drain. That digestive fluid, by the way, isn't acid or bile or anything like that. Depending on the species, the insect is dissolved by bacterial action, enzymes, or in some cases, tiny larvae that live in the fluid and eat the fallen insects, and in turn feed the pitcher plant their poop. Some insects have been known to survive falling into pitcher plants and later emerge as the joker. Next on the list, flypaper. Traps. These operate much in the way the name suggests, but more gross. Uh, each of the leaves on a flypaper trap is covered with glands that secrete mucilage, or snot. Some of these snot glands are inconspicuous, as on the butterwort, which exposes just a tiny amount of mucilage to get the ball rolling. Then once an insect lands on it and starts to struggle, the butterwort takes a cue and starts secreting more mucilage, the plant equivalent of blowing its nose on its prey. Other kinds of flypaper traps have giant ostentatious glands with prominent little snot bubbles all ready to go like the various species of sundew. And some sundews even come off as having aspirations of snap trapping with leaves that slowly coil around the victim, as is the case with this here cape sundew. Trap number four, bladders. By that name, you might think the bladder traps would secrete something, but actually they do the opposite. They suck. Bladder warts, as they are commonly known, are rootless water plants, and though some can be found in soil, they are still rootless, whose method of consumption is a vacuum powered by ions, water, and osmosis. Typically bean-shaped, the traps have a mouth at one end sealed by a hinged door of sorts, surrounded by long protuberances that act as levers to trigger the vacuum. They feed mostly on water fleas, roundworms, and even tadpoles. What's a little bit disconcerting about the tadpoles is that tadpoles are typically too big for bladder warts to swallow in one go. So when sucked in tail first, a tadpole's head will often get stuck in the bladder wart's mouth, sealing the bladder in lieu of the actual door. The digestive process begins immediately, and the tadpole has to just take it like a man. Lobster pot traps are possibly the most sinister of carnivorous plants. 
Though they feed mostly on amoebas and other things we don't care about, lobster pot traps lure their victims inside with the promise of a reward. The prey will trudge through any manner of complex obstacle course just to reach the prize at the end, which is inevitably a disappointment. Kind of like that uh, M. Night Shyamalan movie about killer plants. Charles Darwin suggested that corkscrew plants might be carnivorous as far back as 1898, but it wasn't proven for another hundred years. The same year that A Bug's Life hit theaters, which features no carnivorous plants whatsoever. But that would have been a satisfying ending. Speaking of satisfying endings, this is Human Subject 957, signing off.